AMD are bamboozling us with processors with huge amounts of multi-cores. 12, 16, 24, 32, 64 even. So which processor should you go with early 2020? What stands out for most? I'm sure you've already done your research. So I'm, I'm pretty sure you're gravitating towards AMD Ryzen 9 3900X or the 3950X. Whilst the more interested in gaming exclusively will be gravitating towards the 9900KS or the 9900K by Intel. So which processor? Well firstly, don't get sucked into the hype over multi-cores because once you go over, start going over eight cores, then for most applications, they're not gonna be of much use especially gaming for gaming you can get away with just four cores so even eight cores is a bit of an overkill for gaming what's most important is the clock speed the higher the clock speed the better unfortunately when cpus uh, go beyond say 12 or 8 cores then the clock speed tends to drop and I'm not talking about the turbo I'm talking about the base clock for instance the 3900x 12 cores has a base clock of just 3.8 gigahertz 3.8 gigahertz that's that's awful for instance this computer that I'm currently using is a 4790k and it has a clock speed of a turbo clock speed of 4600 megahertz 4600 and that's across all cores and threads now for AMD the the list of turbo for instance the 300x turbo is 4.6 which is basically what this 2014 processor is running at now however that's not for all cores in fact you might not even get it for single core so there's a huge discrepancy in performance between these large multi-core processors and the lower core processors such as the 1900ks which turbos on all cores to 5 gigahertz which is why it beats all of the amd processors in terms of gaming i.e. they just don't they're not fast enough the clock speeds to, too low so whilst the 300x and the 3950x will be obviously better in tasks that uh, require multiple cores such as encoding and video and uh, video encoding and rendering however when it comes to gaming they don't perform as this table shows where we got the pass mark single core benchmark and the Cinebench single core benchmark and then we've got the pass mark multi core benchmarks and the Cine 20 Cine uh, multiple benchmarks multi core so whilst the sales pitch is based on multi core performance actually what's more important is well for most people what's more important is the clock speed because that translates into a high performance in terms of single core so when you start going over 12 cores it's basically overkill especially if the base clock and the turbo clock drops because the base clock is where the processors will likely be operating most of the time they're not going to go much 3900x is not going to go over 3. Point, much over 3.8 under load across all of its 12 cores and it's going to be even worse for the 3950x no, it's 3.5 base clock that is poor performance that's the price you pay for going multi cores you'll be lucky to see a turbo to four an average of four across all cores you know you're not gonna see, you're probably not even gonna see 4.7 on, on a single core unless you overclock it whilst the 1900KS turbo is a base clock of 4 and turbos to 5 across all cores and you can likely overclock it to 5.2 gigahertz 
maybe more, but they do tend to bin the best processor. You know, the retailers bin them so they can sell them at a higher price. So maybe you won't get much above five gigahertz, maybe 5.1 if you're lucky. So that's what you gotta consider. The base clock, the turbo, and what's the likelihood that these processes are gonna reach the turbo. Multi-core over eight is basically not value for money. It just diminishes, you got diminishing returns. 12 is probably be the optimum. But of these processes, what stand out are those that can turbo cross all cores towards the limit. And that's the i7-9700K. Yeah, it might not have much performance in benchmarking, but in terms of actual real world performance, it will be good. Next, yeah, the 3900X is good value for money. It's only $494. That is good value for money. It's got good single core performance, but it's got a pretty, it's not going to turbo much above 4 gigahertz across cores. But it's got an excellent multi core performance if you want to do video ed editing and rendering and encoding. Then that's the one to go for while well, the 3950x well look 3.5 base clock yeah it's got four more extra cores but you're paying a price for it and you can forget about seeing 4.7 you're not going to see that you'll be lucky to get a four across all cores and it costs 50 percent more than the 3900x so i would probably suggest go with the 3900X. Whilst if you're going to be focused on gaming, uh, I would say that 9900KS, but because of its five core turbo across all cores. However, look at the price $768 on Amazon is its current price. That's ridiculous. You know, it should be around f under $500, but it's not. So maybe you should look to get the 9900K, but then <coughs> you've got a low base clock. However, this does turbo on all cores to five core. So it's a mixed picture. It's not clear cut. It's not as clear cut as the you know the internet makes out that everyone should rush and buy a 3950X or even a 3960X. Or maybe a 3970 if they've got two thousand dollars to burn <clears throat> it's not clear cut because <clears throat> swings and roundabouts the multi cores are lacking in base clock and the ability to turbo which will have a significant impact on real world computing <clears throat> especially gaming if you're looking to game then it's going to be a toss up between if you're heavily involved in gaming then it's a toss up between the 9900k <coughs> and the 3900x which are similarly priced you know the it's going to be a toss up between these two the, they both got something to offer i would given the performance of multi core tasks which is encoding i would veer just towards the 3900X is probably just beating the 9900K whilst if they, they can get the 9900KS's price down to <coughs> under $500 then this would be probably the best processor for early 2020 early 2020 yeah the 9900KS if it's price dropped to four hundred ninety dollars, will probably be the best processor for most people. It's great for gaming. Obviously, you can turbo to five and maybe overclock if you're looking to five point two. It's got good multi-core performance and good single core performance. In fact, it's the best, and it's got a good base clock of four and that's one of the reasons why I've not upgraded my current system yet 
even though it is old. 2014, 4790K. Look, it's running at 5600 hertz. And you can see all of the clocks there. All of the cores, I mean. It turbos to 100% on all four cores and threads. And it's all clocked at 46, uh, 4600 megahertz. With a base clock of 100. And you know, it's here. <clears throat> there is four. Uh, stock is four base and 4.4 .4 turbo. So I've overclocked it to 4.6. And even using the stock, it comes in at 2529 on single core. So none of these processes, the maximum is about 20% higher. Or if you divide. <clears throat> 2998 by 2529 we get less than 20% so in six years five or six years has been less than 20% increase in single core processing power and that's due to the fact that clock speeds haven't gone up much if at all you know 4.6 is what I'm running the 4790k look how it compares Against all of these processors. So again, when you're choosing a processor in early 2020, don't be sucked in by the hype surrounding multi-core benchmarks. They are not all. They will not reflect real-world computing. Yeah, cores do make a difference, but so does clock speed, and the fact that the AMD Ryzen's don't turbo to the clock speed across all cores is a significant impact on performance whilst Intel processors that do turbo you know the 1900k will turbo to 5 gigahertz across all cores when it's under load the 9 3900x the Ryzen 9 3900x won't you'll be lucky to get a single core running at 4.6 gigahertz so that's a significant factor so it's a toss-up between a well like I said the 9900KS needs to fall to the same price as in 3900X then this would be the best processor for 2020 as it is it's a toss-up between the 9900K and the 3900X because you've got the potential of overclocking, successful overclocking to 5.2 gigahertz for the 9900K which makes it a more powerful processor than the 3900X for most applications apart from video rendering and encoding from rendering and video encoding that's where we are early 2020 1900x 1900k 9900ks oh, the 3950x is no the base clock's too low it's not good value for money $750 well it's, it is reasonably priced no it's the same price as the 9900KS <clears throat> this should be priced at under $500 but this is what the prices should be guess what they are 9900K should be $400 <clears throat> the 10980XE should be $750 so it can rival the 10950X even then it's got a rubbish base clock three they've gone backwards intel with the 1098 atxe they've gone backwards and the 9900ks which has the potential to be the best processor should be under 500 dollars wow it's a 3960x is basically a productivity processor it's 400 dollars is way out of you know most people's budget for a gaming PC desktop dot 
2.8, yeah, it's better than 2950X, but not much. You're paying double. Well, it's the 37970X, that is, that's worse than the 3960X. You're going to see worse performance, you know, than, unless you do encoding. So that is not a good value for money. 9900 KS for under five hundred dollars. Thirty nine hundred or else is the thirty nine hundred X. That's what you should look at. Either the thirty nine hundred X, the ninety nine hundred K, or the nine hundred KS if it drops in price.